Let's rise up to pray. Almighty God, we are grateful to you for the privilege you have given to us to be at your presence this morning. Thank you for all that you have been doing in our lives. Thank you for all that you want to do today. Father, we ask you, Lord in heaven, that this day, Lord, you will do good in our lives in Jesus' name. We pray that your purpose for bringing us to this service will be fulfilled in our lives in Jesus' name. And all our brethren that are still on the way, Lord, you will quicken them in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, for the answer. In Jesus' name we pray. We remain standing as we sing from our gospel hymns and songs, hymn number 33. Hymn number 33. What a wonderful change in my life has been wrought since Jesus came into my heart. I have light in my soul for which long I had sought since Jesus came into my heart. I have ceased from my wanderings and going astray since Jesus came into my heart. And my sins, which were many, are all washed away since Jesus came into my heart. I shall go there to dwell in the city I know since Jesus came into my heart. And I'm happy, so happy, as onward I go since Jesus came into my heart.
Amen. Good morning, class. Let's please be seated. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we thank you today, the first day of the week. Thank you for the way you led us last week. And Lord, we come in your presence this day of worship, starting now with the search, the scripture, and we're praying as we search your word. Your word will search our hearts. You will teach us, Lord, and you will get us grounded in the truth of your word in Jesus' name. Amen. Not just be learners and hearers alone, help us to be doers of the word. Amen. Thank you because you know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Once again, I welcome you to the Sardis Scripture class today in Jesus' name. Last week, in our study scripture classes in our various districts, we looked at the Word of God on the trial of faith. In it, we learned that persecution, trials, temptations, or tribulations are common experience of all sins, both in the Old Testament and in the New Testament. But then we're encouraged that whatever be the problem today, the persecution, the trial, no matter how many times the enemy has heated the furnace, we should not give up. Because we are told that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed unto us hereafter at the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Our prayer is that the Lord will keep us standing, whatever be the case today, in Jesus' name. Today we are in study lesson 895 in our study scripture booklet. And the title is Water Baptism. Shall we repeat it together? A little bit louder water baptism. A memory verse is taken from Matthew chapter 28 verse 19 and 20. Matthew chapter 28 verses 19 and 20. Can anybody please attempt the memory verse? Anybody? From the choir session. All right, our sister there. Go ahead. Okay, the mic is not working. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things Whatsoever I have taught you, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Thank you, and God bless your sister. Shall we recite it about the count of two? One, two, go. Amen. Our text is taken from Matthew chapter 3, reading, uh, that's from verse 1 to 17. Then Acts of the Apostles, chapter 8, from verses 26 to 40. But we are going to read some selected verses from Matthew chapter 3, verse 1 to 8, is 13 to 17. 
and then Acts chapter 8. I will be calling the selected verses from there. Can we have Brother Aruya from the choir seat? Brother Aruya. All right, anybody? Please read our text for us. We are reading from Matthew chapter 3 from verse 1 to 8. In those days came John the Baptist, preaching the will in the wilderness of Judea, and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. And the same John had his raiment of camel's hair, and a lantern gathered about his loins, and his meat was locusts and wild honey. Then went out to him Jerusalem, and all Judea, and all the region round about Jordan, and were baptized of him in Jordan, confessing their sins. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism, he said unto them, O generation of vipers, who had warned you to flee from the wrath to come, bring forth therefore fruit meat for repentance. Verses 13 to 17. Then cometh Jesus from Galilee to Jordan unto John, and to be baptized of him. But John forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptized of thee, and comest thou to me. And Jesus answering said unto him, Suffer it to be so now, for thus it become met us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he suffered him. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water, and lo, the heavens were opened unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove, and lighting upon him. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Acts of the Apostles chapter 8, from verse 26 to 31. Acts chapter 8. From verse 26 to 31. Acts chapter 8 from verse 26. And the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip, saying, Arise and go toward the south, unto the way that goeth down from Jerusalem unto Gaza, which is desert. And he arose and went. And behold, a man of Ethiopia, and he know of great authority under candidacy, queen of the Ethiopians who are the church of all our treasure, and had come to Jerusalem for to worship, was returning and sitting in his chariot, reading Isaiah the prophet. Then the Spirit said unto Philip, Go near and join thyself to his chariot. And Philip ran thither to him and heard him read the prophet Isaiah, and said, Understandest thou what thou readest? And he said, How can I accept some man? should guide me and he desired philip that he would come up and sit with him the place of the scripture which he read was this he was led as a sheep to the slaughter and like a lamb dumb before his shearer so opened he not his mouth and his humiliation it's all right verse 35 then philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him jesus and as they went on their way, they came unto a certain water. And the Enoch said, See, here is water. What does hinder me to be baptized? And Philip said, If thou believest with all thy heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And he commanded the shadow to stand still. And they went down both into the water, both Philip and the Enoch. And he baptized him. And when they were come up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord caught away Philip, that the Enoch saw him no more. And he went on his way rejoicing. Thank you. Thank you, and God bless you. Like I said, we are looking at water baptism. That's what forms the subject of our consideration today. Water baptism is one of the canal cardinal doctrines of the scriptures of the Bible. 
is an ordinance instituted by Christ Jesus himself, and it is binding on every believer in Christ. If we have believed in the Lord and our sins are forgiven, then it behooves us to surrender ourselves for water baptism. And uh, water baptism, as we can see, is uh, linked together with the Great Commission. They are inseparably linked together. And uh, the Lord told us here, he says, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And he said, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. We are to go and preach that men should repent like John the Baptist did. John the Baptist came preaching repentance unto the people. And as many as gave heed to the preaching and the God repented, he baptized them. We are to do the same thing. Those who repent and turn to the Lord through our preachings must be followed up and be baptized in water. That's what our memory verse is stressing today. He said unto them, go in into all the nations and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. And after that, we begin to teach them. Apart from water baptism, there is another ordinance which was instituted by the Lord Jesus himself and is made compulsory upon every child of God. What ordinance is that? Can anybody tell us? There is another ordinance before the cross. Yes, our brother there. It is, it is the Lord's Supper. God bless you. The Lord's Supper, that's the other ordinance. And uh, we need to understand that these two ordinances are compulsory for all believers, compulsory, binding on all believers. If we are truly believers in the Lord, we are born again, and by the grace of God, we are living right. We should not try to avoid or tactically dodge either the Lord's Supper or the water baptism as we are considering today as the manner of some people is in the church. Today we are looking at water baptism under three subheadings. Number one, meaning and imp importance of water baptism. Meaning and importance of water baptism. Number, uh, point number two, main condition. Main condition for water baptism. Then we we'll look at uh, point number three, we we'll look at the mandate and command to baptize. Point number one is meaning and importance of water baptism. Here we are told in, a, in John chapter 3, where our, we read in our side scriptures that John the Baptist was baptizing the people. But then when you come to Colossians, you see all over the New Testament, you see that word, baptize or baptism. And in uh, Colossians chapter 2, we are told in verse uh, 12, Colossians chapter 2, reading there in verse 12, it says, Buried with him in baptism, wherein also ye are risen with him through the faith of the oppression of God, who has raised him from the dead. Here, baptism is mentioned. Even though it's all over the scriptures, there are still a lot of uh, misconceptions concerning water baptism and it has been so grossly misunderstood today in many Christian assembly. As you look at and listen to some of the preachers, you shouldn't listen to them, but you have some of them that are modeled up in their preaching and uh, we as children of God in a Bible church like this, we must be grounded in all the fundamental teachings of the Word of God. We shouldn't be children tossed to and fro by the wind of doctrines that are flying here and there. 
the question is, what is water baptism? You should know it. When somebody confronts you and asks you that question, you see, the word baptize is derived from a Greek word, baptizo, which is uh, uh, to immerse or to dip into a liquid. And that shows us that the proper form of water baptism is by immersion. That is, you immerse the person into the water only once in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, just like the Lord demonstrated to us in uh, Matthew chapter 3. Matthew chapter 3, reading there in verse 16. Matthew chapter 3 and in verse uh, 16. We are told in that place, verse 16, it says, and Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water, and lo, the heavens were opened unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him. He went up straightway. Now, before he went up out of the water, he has gone into the water. And that's, a, 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 that's logical. And so it is uh, a, a to mass uh, the candidate into the water. Jesus has shown us the example. Now, there are preachers today that teach certain errors concerning water baptism. In their ignorance, some teachers teach and they emphasize to their members that water baptism is not necessary. Ignorantly, they teach and they rest their argument on the case of the thief on the cross. Another, another uh, set of people also teach that you cannot be saved except you are baptized. In fact, they said it is the water baptism that saves us. Others teach, those are the people at the middle of the fence, they say yes, water baptism is necessary, but it should be done only in the name of the Lord. I want to say from the word of God that all these people are wrong. The scripture teaches, and we have found that number one, water baptism is very necessary. Think about that. The Lord Jesus commanded it. If it is not necessary, the Lord wouldn't have commanded it, and he himself wouldn't have exemplified it. Showing us the example. Yes, there are circumstances. There are situations where water baptism may be uh, impossible, like uh, the thief on the cross that the people refer to. If you look at the case of the thief on the cross, uh, you know, he had just given his life to the Lord, and then he, his sins have been forgiven. Look at the situation. Should Jesus now say, ah, because if you are not baptized in water, you cannot get to heaven. Let me, let's come down now and let's go and get baptized. That's, that's not possible at that time. And it's like you go to the hospital, somebody is about giving up. And then you pray for such individual. And then a few minutes after the person has given his life to the Lord, he dies. Now, the situation at the hospital, you can't go to the doctor now and say, this man has just given his life to the Lord. Please excuse me to take him to the water before he dies. Those situations, we call them emergency situations. And the Lord understands. And so, uh, there are situations where it may not be possible because of the, you know, the condition on ground. Now, water baptism cannot save, as they say. It cannot save because... They, I told you here now, the thief on the cross went to paradise without getting baptized. And uh, the Bible tells us in Leviticus chapter 17, Leviticus chapter 17, we are told there in verse uh, 11. Leviticus chapter 17, reading there in verse 11. It says, for the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls. If for it is the blood, not the water, it is the blood that maketh an atonement for the soul. And then Hebrews chapter 9 verse 22 tells us that uh, without the shedding of the blood, there will be no remission. It is not the water that makes atonement for the soul. It is the blood. What can wash away my stain? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. So settle that. Water baptism does not save. Then, water baptism is not also done in the name of Jesus only, but it should be done in line with our memory verse today, 
go ye into all the world and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them, listen, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, one a mansion. Now, another error is there are people that say, well, it is in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, but in the name of the Father, one, you put the person into the water, second time, the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, the second time, then the third time, three times, is one a mansion. And uh, we need to understand all these errors and uh, do not believe. Uh, apart from these erroneous teachings that uh, I already mentioned, there are some other erroneous views and practices of water baptism. Can we please mention some of them? Can anybody? Nobody from the front here. Sprinkling. Some of, okay, yes, our brother here. Sprinkling. What? Say it again. Sprinkling. God bless you. Sprinkling of water on the candidate. Well, so many things that people do in those places, uh, like our sister says, sprinkling of water on the candidate. Others make a sign of the cross with the water on the, on the face of that individual. Others pour water on, on the candidate. But I want to say that none of this meets the demand of water baptism. The water baptism demands that uh, the candidate should be dipped. I told you before, baptized, baptizo, is to dip into liquid. So that uh, candidate should be dipped into the water, immersed into the water. Uh, we are told in John chapter 3, John's Gospel chapter 3, and in verse 23. John chapter 3, reading there in verse 23, it says, And John also was baptizing in Enon, near to Salem, because, because there was much water there. Because there was much water there. It's not because there was a bucket of water that you can just take little and pour on the people, but because there was much water there, and they came and be baptized. He took them to where there was much water so that you could immerse them. And uh, so let's take correction now. It is done in a place where there's much water by immersion. Now, uh, there are others that teach infant baptism. Well, infants cannot repent. And because they cannot repent, either from good or bad, uh, so we cannot baptize them. Others go into christening a candidate. Christening a candidate, that is, compulsorily giving a name to the one that is baptized. I remember some years back, uh, a, a, an elderly man in my church, you know, he had been coming to the church for more than three, four years, and every time we, announcement was made, water baptism. Now we discovered that this man was not coming forth, and I called him and said, I said, Baba, you have been coming to church. I know you are born again. You are living right. Why are you not baptized in water? You know what Baba said? He said, I don't want to change my name. And you know, it's because of the runner said ideas you know, people bring from various places. They think that when you get baptized, you must change your name, have a baptismal name. But you know, Jesus did not change his name. Colonials did not change his name. And all those people that got baptized, they did not change their name. The question now is, what significance then? is water baptism very very important very significant number one jesus told us in uh, matthew chapter 3 verse 15 he says it's to fulfill all righteousness as we follow his footsteps not only that it is the means by which the new believer openly demonstrates his or her identification with christ in his death burial and uh, resurrection and so that is the significance of that. Very important. You identify with Christ in his death and uh, in his burial and resurrection. In, um, uh, in Matthew chapter, sorry, Romans chapter 6, we are told there in verse 3, know ye not that so many of us as we are baptized into Jesus Christ, we are baptized into his death. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death. That like as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in the newness of life. When you are baptized in the water, after that you are expected to walk in the newness of life. Now, point number two is the main condition for water baptism. We have seen it already. John the Baptist preached to the people repentance, and as they repented, he baptized them. And then we read about the Ethiopian eunuch that before he was baptized, you know, Philip had preached to him, and uh, he has given his life to the Lord as they were walking. 
and he said, look, I've given my life to the Lord. Now what hinders me from being baptized? And so Philip, knowing that he has uh, surrendered his life to the Lord, his life is changed, he baptized him. So here we see then that the main condition for water baptism is total repentance from sin and faith in the atoning blood of Jesus Christ. In Acts chapter 2, Acts of the Apostles chapter 2, verse 37, now when they heard this, they had the message of repentance. They were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Then said Peter unto them, Look at it, number one, repent and be baptized. It is first of all, repent. After that, be baptized. So the condition here is repentance. We don't have to wait until this new convert now has understood all the doctrines of the Bible, and then before we take him to water baptism, once someone has shown a clear evidence and assurance of salvation, he should be baptized. He should be baptized. Look at that example from uh, the Ethiopian eunuch we read about. However, because of the, thing, the way things are today, we should ensure that only those who are truly uh, have truly repented should be baptized. Only those people who are truly repented. That's why uh, John the Baptist was asking the Pharisees. He says, are you coming to be baptized? Let me see the fruit that is meet or suitable for repentance. And then he baptized those who are really repented. And uh, what should be the expected life then of the one that have repented? I told you, number one, newness of life. Life above reproach. And then service unto the Lord service unto the Lord. We need to serve the Lord because he has commanded us, he has mandated us. Point number three, mandate and command to baptize. Mandate and command to baptize. That's our memory verse in uh, Matthew chapter 28 verse 19 and 20. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always even to the end of the world. Now, it's, that is Christ's parting word. He commands us to go ye and to teach all nations. He says, as we go and teach, we should baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Jesus did not only give the command, as you know, he also demonstrated it. He submitted himself to water baptism. The church has no choice today than to obey the Lord implicitly, obey him unreservedly, we must preach, thank God, by the grace of God in Lagos State here, throughout yes, uh, Friday and Saturday, we went out and we have been holding crusade, preaching to the people. Thank God, some of us were there, but I see some people also that were not there and uh, they, they, they didn't come. But as we have preached to these people, we now follow them up and we make sure that we, are, we disciple them. And then, without wasting time, we get the people, those who have got converted, we get them baptized. And then we can establish discipleship class, teaching them to observe all things that the Lord has commanded us. The new convert himself should not wait to be coerced, should not wait to be pestered before he or she will surrender himself to be baptized in water. Jesus Christ and all the people who read there, the Ethiopian, you know, they did not pester, I mean, Philip did not pester the Ethiopian eunuch, and John did not pester Jesus to be baptized. They obeyed. Now, when we obey this divine injunction, what are the blessings? So much, so much. In uh, Matthew chapter 3, Matthew chapter 3, we are reading there from verse 17. Matthew chapter 3 now, look at it in verse 17. And uh, so, sorry, from verse 16. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water, and lo, the heavens were opened unto him. Here we see open heaven. Heaven will open for you. As you obey the Lord in uh, doing the will of God, the heaven will open. And when heaven opens, what do you expect? There will be blessings. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. It, it gladdens the heart of our Father God in heaven. When he sees us identifying with the death of his son, the burial and the resurrection, not only that, there's divine favor here and the showers of blessing coming from heaven. And not only that, there is joy of obedience to 
the commandment of God. Ethiopian eunuch, when he was baptized, the Bible says he went home. He, was, he started going home rejoicing. And that's his experience. I remember when I was baptized, as we were coming home like that, my heart was full of joy. And I discovered that's the experience of everyone. Joy that you have obeyed the Lord. The Lord has taught us today what we need to do as a church, go into all the world. And we must go. And we must preach and baptize the people. Now, as members of the church, those who have not been baptized, whether old members or young converts, we should obey the Lord today. If you have not repented, repent. And make sure that you give your life to the Lord. And after that, be baptized. Are we going to obey the Lord? I said, are we going to obey the Lord? Rise up on your feet and talk to the Lord in prayer. Are we obeying the Great Commission? Are we preaching the gospel? I'm getting people converted. And those who get converted, who have repented, are we getting them baptized in water? And I say, a member of the church, you are not yet baptized. All this while, why not? Why not? In Jesus' name we pray. Heavenly Father, we just praise your name for what you have taught us. We thank you, Lord, for the truth of your word. We're asking that you help every one of us to walk in the light of this truth in Jesus' name. Lord, as we obey you, doing your will, preaching the word of God, serving the Lord, and getting baptized, those who have given their life to the Lord, and for those who have not been baptized, yielding themselves, I pray that all the blessings we read about in your word will be practical in every life in Jesus' name. As we continue in the service, continue with us. In Jesus' name we pray. Praise the Lord. We have heard from our teacher this morning on the topic of our teaching today, water baptism. If you have any question on what we have learned, you can come to the front of the hall to be given the privilege to ask your question. Can I have the first brother there? Good morning, sir. Good morning. So my question is concerning what you have been taught today about water baptism. I want to ask, if you are a believer, a member, you are saved, and maybe you travel and you find yourself in a community or a village where you preach the gospel, and some people believe, do you have the right to baptize them? That's my question. Sorry, I didn't hear your question. I said, sir, if you are a believer, a member, and it happens that you travel to a village or a community where you find yourself, you preach the gospel there, and they repented and gave their life to Christ. Can a believer, can that, lead, that believer who preached the gospel, does he have the right to baptize those people that believe? Electronics, if you can reduce the other classes, we'll be able to hear. I'm not hearing what he's asking. Praise the Lord. Can you hear me now, sir? Yes. My question is concerning as a believer, I mean, a member in the church, you are saved, and maybe you travel to a community or a village, you find yourself as a believer there, you preach the gospel to people there, and they repented. Can you 
you know, baptize them? Do you have the right to baptize them? That's my question. In that village, you should find out if we have a Bible church, if our church is there, for example, if our church is there, you link them up with the church so that there they can be baptized. Do you understand? You link them up with the church there, the church will do the baptism for them. Thank you. The brother, he has gone back. Yes, the next brother. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Um, my question is this, sir. Um, based on our topic, um, I read from Acts chapter 2, from verse 37. It says, Now when they had had this, they were pricked in their heart, and said unto Peter, and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, Repent, and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Now in chapter 19 of Acts, verse, I read verse 1, which says, And it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus, and finding certain disciples, he said unto them, Have ye received the Holy Ghost since ye believed? And they said unto him, We have not so much as heard whether there be any holy Holy Ghost. And he said unto them, What then were ye baptized? And they said, Unto John's baptism. Then said Paul, John verily baptized with the pursuit of the repentance, saying unto the people, that they should believe on him that should come after him, that is, on Jesus Christ. And when they had this, they were baptized in the, in the name of the Lord Jesus. And then, after that, they received the Holy Ghost. Now concerning our text, or rather our memory verse. Christ said, go into all the world and preach the gospel, baptizing him in the name of the Father, What's and of question, the Son, please? and of the Holy Ghost. So my question is this, those that baptized in the name of Jesus, which is Peter and Paul, and then those that in our era now that baptized in the name of Jesus, and those that baptized in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, what is the difference? And then like, what is the one like which one shall we stand on that's my question sir give the mic to the next uh, sister my question is this for what we have learned today like from our memory verse says that we should go into the whole world and teach all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things and whatsoever I commanded you, lo, I will be with you always, even unto the end of the world. So I want to ask, like what the Lord has said to him, is this we should go and teach them, preach the word to them, bring them to Christ, make sure that they should be saved, and after be born again, we baptize them. So I want to ask, after we have gone out to preach, we do all our efforts to bring them to the Christ and they've been baptized. Then at the end, you can no longer see them in the church. You go outside, maybe following them or asking them, what is the problem that for all the while I cannot see you? They will give you stories. Ah, I don't know. That sister, that brother is in that church. Maybe they have come to see the sinners and, and the sinners and backsliders in the church. Those people now, they will drop by people that have been baptized. At times, it used to make someone to be discouraged. So I want to, uh, what shall we do to continue the great mandate that the Lord has given to us? Should we stop it? All right, thank you. From the study we had today, and from what we found in the scriptures, Jesus, our Lord and Savior, gave an authoritative command, a mandate to the church, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. In Matthew 28, it says, go ye therefore 
and teach all nations. That means make disciples of all nations. The first teaching there is going to preach the gospel. You teach them the gospel. And when they repent and are converted, it says baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. That is the author authoritative command and approach by the Lord that we should baptize. Now, in Acts chapter 2, where our brother quoted in chapter 19, when the apostles said they should be baptized in the name of Jesus, they were saying at the authority of Jesus, not in the name of Jesus only. Such apostles will not have disobeyed the Lord. They could not have baptized anyone in the name of Jesus only. It is at the authority of Jesus. And what's the authority of Jesus? Go ye into all the world, preach the gospel, baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. You cannot conclude that they were baptized in the name of Jesus only because you are not there. But they were only talking on the authority of the name of Jesus. The proof of that, look at 1 John chapter 1. 1 John chapter 1, we are reading from verse 1. He says, that which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled of the word of life. The, for the life is manifested and we have seen it and bear witness and show unto you the eternal life which was with the Father and was manifested unto us. Verse 3, that which we have seen and handled, declare we unto you that ye also may have fellowship with us and truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. So what the Lord gave to them, what they saw, what they received, what they had, is what they are giving back to the church. So as a church, we have to obey the command of the Lord, baptizing in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Now, if we go out to preach and then the souls say they are converted and we cannot find them in the church, and then we go to follow them up and they are running away from us, it shows one single thing, that they do not have genuine conversion. If they have genuine conversion, they will stay, they will remain in the faith. Acts chapter 2, from verse 41. Acts chapter 2, from verse 41. There it says, then they that gladly received his word were baptized, and the same day were added unto them about 3,000 souls, and they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine, and in fellowship, and in breaking of bread, and in prayers. If they have genuine conversion, no doubt they will continue in the church and in the doctrines of the church. Water baptism is an ordinance instituted by the Lord himself and uh, it is binding on the church and all believers. Every believer who receives the gospel and is converted must submit to water baptism and the church as we go out to preach the gospel when souls are converted we have the mandate of the Lord to baptize them in water and that we must not fail. It is a public declaration of our conversion and identification with Christ. That was the word of God. When we are baptized in water, there are other people there. When the eunuch of Ethiopia was baptized, his other servants was there, Philip was there, and other people are there to witness that uh, baptism. 
for him to publicly declare that he's now a child of God. We identify with Christ's death, with his burial and resurrection. And then from there, we begin to live in newness of life. Every genuinely converted soul must joyfully submit to water baptism as the Enoch of Ethiopia did and the early believers on the day of Pentecost as they did. Water baptism is to be totally, by, to be by immersion, totally buried in water, not by sprinkling of water as some others do, not by the sign of the cross as others do. The candidate must go into the water. We saw Jesus coming out of the water. It means he must have, he has gone into the water. We saw Ethiopian eunuch and Philip, they went down into the water and they came out. So it must be by immersion. And the Lord says, it is to fulfill all righteousness. If you have been converted and you refuse to submit to water baptism, you have not fulfilled all righteousness. And that will hinder all other blessings that supposed to have gotten as a believer. The baptism of the Holy Ghost, you cannot have if you are disobeying the Lord. The baptism of suffering and persecution, you cannot have if you are disobeying the initial one that identifies you with Christ. If Christ our Lord and Savior submitted, we also, we must submit. Water baptism should be done only after conversion. We saw various people, they were converted before they were baptized. We saw the 3,000 souls in Acts chapter 2. We saw the eunuch of Ethiopia. We saw the Samaritan believers in Acts chapter 8. We see Paul the Apostle himself in Acts chapter 9, verse 17 and 18. And then we saw Cornelius and his household, the Philippian jailer and his household, Lydia and, his, and her household. They were all converted before submitting to water baptism. Salvation does not come by water baptism, but when you are saved, you are bound to obey that command of the Lord to fulfill all righteousness by submitting yourself to water baptism. If you are in the church and you have not done water baptism, you must go immediately after now, after today, and submit yourself, provided you have genuine conversion, you have repented, you have assurance you are a child of God, you give yourself in obedience to the Lord. And when you obey the Lord, the blessings of the Lord will be upon your life in Jesus' name. Let's rise up and go to the Lord in prayer. The Lord has taught us today on a doctrinal issue in the church, which every believer is bound to submit to. And if you have not been baptized in water and you're a child of God, you go ahead with immediate effect and submit yourself. And as we go out to preach the gospel, those who are genuinely converted, we must bring them for water baptism so they can fulfill the commandment of the Lord. Let's commit ourselves to the Lord that we will not just be hearers of the word, but as we hear, we will obey. We will be doers of the word, we will obey the teachings of the word of God. And then the blessings of doers of the word will be upon our lives. Present yourself to the Lord. And if you are a sinner here, you need to repent and give your life to the Lord so that you can pass through this experience of water baptism and then you are a full member of the body of Christ. The Lord will help us to be doers of the word in Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. Thank you for what you have learned. We pray that as we go back, 
to give us the grace to be doers of the word in Jesus' name. And as we obey and do the word, your blessings will be upon our lives in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed.
Let's rise up. Let's rise up as we sing from our Let's rise up as we sing from our gospel hymns and songs in number 47. 47. Just as God who reigns on high speak to them, to men in days gone by, so the Lord is calling men today. And my brother, this is true. Whatsoever he says to you, there is but one thing to do, just to be. If you are in the Savior's hands, you must do as he commands, for there is no other gospel way. Never put the message by. Never stop to reason why, when the Savior speaks to you, just to be. If a man's fair, you sigh, in that land beyond the sky, after time with you has passed away, though the way you may not see, Christ is calling, follow me. Faith and duty, both we cry, just to be. Just to be, just to be, is the way, God's way. When the message comes to you, there is but one thing to do, just to be just to be.
chapter 70, in 70. Have you any room for Jesus who had bore your load of sin? As he knocks and asks admission, sinners, will you let him in? Room for pleasure, room for business, but for Christ, the crucified, but not a place that he can enter in your heart for which he died? Have you any time for Jesus as in grace he calls again? Oh, today is time accepted. Tomorrow you may call in vain. Room and time now give to Jesus. Soon will pass God's day of grace. Soon thy heart left cold and silent, and thy Savior's pleading cease. Room for Jesus, King of glory. Hasten now, his words obey. Swing the heart's door widely open. Bid him enter while you may.
Amen. We remain standing as we go to the Lord in prayer. In Psalm 98 verse 4, the Bible says, Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. All the earth make a loud noise and rejoice and sing praises. We're going to spend time to praise the Lord because he's our God, he's our Lord. He's our Savior, he's our Redeemer. He's our Sanctifier, he's our Baptizer. He's our Healer, he's our Helper. He's our King, he's our Father. Let's worship him. Let's glorify his name. He has been good to us. He remains good and he will ever be good. Thank him. Worship him. Glorify his name. Lift up your voice. Look at all that he has done in your own life personally. Look at all he has done in your family. Look at what he has been doing in the church. Let's praise the Lord. Let's worship the Lord. Let's glorify his name. All power belongs unto him. He is working and he will ever continue to work in us. Let's thank him. Let's thank him. Let's thank him. The Lord is good to us. Praise the Lord. Look at your life. Think about what you have been doing. Since the beginning of the year, the Lord has kept us. He has kept you personally. He has watched over you, over your life, over your family. Thank him. Thank him. In our going out and coming in, he has been with us. We have passed through a period of danger, yet God has been with you. Let's thank him for his love for us. He loves us so much and is preparing us for heaven. His purpose for saving us, for calling us, is always fulfilled. Thank the Lord. Worship the Lord. Glorify his name. In Jesus' name we pray. It is now time to give our tithe and offering to the Lord. I read from 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 2. Upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him in store, as God has prospered him, that there be no gatherings when I come. Whatever you have brought to the Lord in form of tithe and offering, you can raise it up so that we can pray. Our Father, we are very grateful to you for life that you are given to us. Thank you for the privilege you are giving to us. Thank you for your provisions. Thank you very much for making it possible for us to come to you today. Lord, out of the abundance you have given to us, we are raising up this said little that we are giving to you. Father, we ask of God you will sanctify it and receive it, and Lord, you will use it to the propagation of the gospel in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, for the answer. In Jesus' name we pray. Let's drop the offering as we remain in the mode of prayer. The Lord has saved us thus far. Let's thank the Lord. Let's worship him. Let's glorify his name. We're going to pray for the church. In Ephesians chapter 2, in verse 20, in verse 19. Now therefore ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God and are built upon the foundation of the apostle and prophet Jesus Christ himself, being the chief cornerstone. We are going to pray for the church, Deeper Life Bible Church. We are going to pray that this church will remain uh, solid upon the foundation of the apostle and prophets and Jesus Christ. Let's pray to the Lord. This church will remain solid upon the foundation. The church from all of us, from the pulpit or the pew, will stand upon the solid rock. Tell the Lord, nothing will take us away from where he has placed us. Pray unto the Lord. You are part of the church, part of the church. Let's pray that all of us, God will help us. We will stand upon the solid rock. There's so much error all over the place. The Lord will help us. We have laid our hands on the plow. Pray to the Lord that God will help you, will help me. We will not look back. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Apostle Paul, by the Spirit of God, says that uh, in the last days, some shall depart 
from the faith. We are going to pray to the Lord that you will not depart from the faith. You may not be among the some that will depart. I will not be among the some that will depart. Let's pray to the Lord. We will not depart from the faith. In Jesus' name we pray. We are going to pray for Deeper Christian Life Ministry. You know that uh, Deeper Life Bible Church came out from Deeper Christian Life Ministry. We are going to pray to the Lord that the purpose of God for this ministry will be fulfilled in Nigeria, in Africa, and the world at large. Let's pray to the Lord. God has a purpose. God has a purpose for setting up this ministry through our pastor. Deeper Christian Life Ministry. Deeper Life came out of Deeper Christian Life Ministry. God has helped us. Deeper Life is standing strong. Let's pray. The purpose of God for Deeper Christian Life Ministry will be fulfilled in Nigeria, in Africa, and the world at large. Let's pray. Let's pray to the Lord. The Lord will help us. He will help this ministry. In Jesus' name we pray. There is going to be a minister's development networking summit in this church. And uh, it is being hosted by Deeper Christian Life Ministry. We are going to pray for this program. The program is coming up this week. We are going to pray to the Lord that God will use this program to turn the church around in Nigeria. Let's pray to the Lord. The Lord will use this program to turn the church around. Let's pray. This program will bring about unity, unity in purpose, unity in doctrine, unity in focus. The Lord is preparing the church, universal for heaven, Let's tell the Lord, this program will fulfill that purpose. It's the first uh, edition of it. In Jesus' name we pray. The program is going to hold inside this auditorium, and the power of God is still in this auditorium. We are going to tell the Lord that uh, the power of God will be mightily manifested inside this auditorium. The Holy Spirit will move mightily that every person, you know, members, uh, uh, the pastors and uh, workers from many, many other churches all over the nation, all over the gospel, we come in here. We are going to pray that the Holy Spirit will move mightily in his power in this auditorium. Let's pray to the Lord. No minister will come here and remain the same. No church worker will come here and remain the same. The Lord will move mightily. He will fulfill his purpose. He will remove scales from the eyes of those whose eyes have been covered. The scriptures will be made very, very clear to every participant. The Holy Spirit will walk in every heart. In Jesus' name we pray. We're going to pray for our pastor. We're going to tell the Lord that the Lord will use him mightily at this time. I want to read the scripture in Joshua chapter 14. Joshua chapter 14. I'll read in verse 10. Joshua chapter 14 in verse 10. And now, behold, the Lord has kept me alive, as he said. These forty and five years, ever since the Lord spake this word unto Moses, while the children of Israel wandered in the wilderness, and now, lo, I am this day, first score, and eight, five years old. 
As yet I am as strong this day as I was in the day that Moses sent me. As my strength was then, even so is my strength now for war, both to go out and to come in. By the grace of God, we know that our pastor is growing old. We are going to pray that God will repeat the, the, the miracle that he performed in the life of Joshua, that at 35, he had the strength of uh, 45. We are going to pray God will give our pastor the strength of 40 at this time. He will give him the vigor of 40 at this time. We give him the vitality of 40 at this time. Let's pray to the Lord. The Lord will strengthen him. There is still much work for him to do. The Lord will strengthen him. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Do good in thy good pleasure unto Zion. Build thou the walls of Jerusalem. We want to pray for our nation. We want to pray that the Lord will do good in our nation. We have just uh, concluded the uh, uh, election. We are going to pray all the broken walls in our nation, the Lord will rebuild them all. Let's tell the Lord. Do good in our nation. All the broken walls of our economy, our security, our infrastructure, the Lord will build them all. God will take over the affairs of this nation. In Jesus' name we pray. You want to pray for yourself? We have come to the service today. The Bible says, Teach me to do thy will, for thou art my God. Thy spirit is good. Lead me into the land of uprightness. We're going to pray to the Lord. As we come here today, the Lord will teach us. He will teach us to do the will of God. Pray to the Lord. Oh Lord, teach me to do your will. Jesus Christ said, Not everyone that said to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but those who do the will of God. Pray to the Lord, O oh Lord, teach me to do thy will. <coughs> In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Our Father, we are very grateful to you for the time that we have spent to call upon you. We know that you are God that answered prayer. You have told us that we should call upon you and you will hear us. We thank you very much because as we have called you, you have heard us. Father, to you be the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, we have prayed for the church, the Palais Bible Church. We are asking, Lord in heaven, that this church will remain standing upon the foundation of the apostles, the prophets, and Jesus Christ in Jesus' name. Amen. And we pray that all of us, from the pulpit to the pew, you help us that we keep standing on the solid rock in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, we have prayed for deeper Christian life ministry. Deeper Life Bible Church came out from Deeper Christian Life Ministry. We are going to pray on your purpose for this ministry will be fulfilled in Nigeria, in Africa, and the world in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, we have also prayed for the First Minister's Development Networking Summit that is holding this week. We ask, oh God, that you will use this summit to prepare souls for the kingdom in their multitude in Jesus' name. Amen. We pray that, Lord, Holy Ghost Divine, you will move mightily in this auditorium, that no one will come here and remain the same in Jesus' name. Lord, we have prayed for our general superintendent, but I will pray, Lord, in heaven, you will strengthen him. The strength of 40 given to him, the vigor of 40 given to him, the vitality of 40 given to him, and, Lord, a special anointing for this period, Father, given to him in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray for our country, Nigeria. We ask asking, Lord, in heaven, you are the one that has helped us thus far. We pray during the election and there was peace. Oh Lord in heaven, we are asking all the broken walls in our nation, you will rebuild them up in Jesus' name. You will do good in our nation in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, for the answer. Lord, we commit ourselves to your hands this morning. We ask you, God in heaven, as we have come here, Lord, you will teach us to do your will. Our family will do your will. In our life, we'll do your will. In our ministry, we'll do your will. Lord, at the end of this meeting, every one of us will go back home rejoicing in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, for the answer. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Let's have a seat. 
You're all welcome to today's uh, Sunday worship service in Jesus' name. This is Tipa Life Bible Church International Headquarters, Bagada. And this service brings together worshipers from uh, our service group two from various places. And we want to specially welcome all our visitors and newcomers. We know that you are there. So we want you to kindly raise up your hand for recognition so that we can see you. Just, just raise up your hand. If you are just coming, you are invited. God bless you. God bless you. Uh, the Lord will bless you in Jesus' name. I say the Lord will bless you in Jesus' name. The pastor and general superintendent of the church, who is seated right here on the, on the podium, he wants me to greet you and to encourage you to keep coming so that as the Lord has used him to bless the multitude of people you are seeing around you, the Lord will use him to bless you mightily in Jesus' name. And meanwhile, you need to ensure that you keep close uh, to the brethren that invited you so that uh, they can help you further in your Christian journey. Now, our, our ushers are standing around in the auditorium. Uh, you can raise up your hand. They will give you a slip, fill it uh, correctly, and return same to them. Our weekly meetings announcement. In this church, we have three definite and important services. Every Sunday like this, we meet together in our different church locations to worship the Lord in truth and in spirit. We commence the service at 7.45 a.m. Occasionally, we have the privilege to meet our, with our Lord, our, our Father and the Lord here at the headquarters based on our service groups. And uh, uh, in your, you, as you attend your service, there any time you hear that we are coming to this place, you, are, you are also come. On Mondays, we come here for our Bible, um, we hold our Bible study. Uh, it's a time when we link up with our general superintendent through live transmission uh, on internet. We study the word of God in systematic and expository manner. Presently, we are studying the gospel according to St. Mark. The time for the Bible study is 6 p.m. Tomorrow is another day of Bible study. Our brethren and worshippers from Old Festac, they are to come here to fellowship with our Father and the Lord, while the rest of us will link up through a live transmission. Thursdays are days of revival and evangelism training service. When we are revived, body, spirit, and soul, we are also trained to, uh, for effective involvement in the end time harvest of souls. The time is 6.30 p.m. But every third Thursday of the month, we all gather from all over Lagos here at the headquarters for monthly power night, where we come face to face with God's mighty power through the ministry of our general superintendent. Last Thursday was a great time for verifiable miracles. You cannot afford to miss the next one. The time is 6 p.m. Other announcements. Uh, on Wednesday, 27th, uh, uh, we are having uh, uh, the Deepak Christian Life Ministry. Uh, we'll be hosting a gathering of ministers and workers from other denominations for a summit tag, Building the Builder, in this auditorium. And in preparation for that uh, minister's conference, all regular workers, adult workers, campus, youth and children, you have to wait after the message for a special and important information. The Lord will bless us in Jesus' name.
Lord said, He told me what a fool I had been. But when my mind get back to that old place where I've been, I know that I've been born again. Yes, I Times along the way, my faith has gone weak when burden seems to rise on every hand. But when I still away in prayer, he answers my plea, my every need he understands. Thank God I am. Oh, I am. And I'm happy night and day. Before the Sunday message today, we shall have a brief period of scripture reading. The Gospel according to St. Mark. The Gospel according to St. Mark. Chapter 15. Chapter 15. And straightway in the morning, 
the chief priests held a consultation with the elders and scribes and the whole council and bound Jesus and carried him away and delivered him to Pilate. And Pilate asked him, Art thou the king of the Jews? And he answering said unto him, Thou sayest it. And the chief priests accused him of many things, but he answered nothing. And Pilate asked him again, saying, Answerest thou nothing? Behold how many things they witness against thee. But Jesus yet answered nothing, so that Pilate marveled. Now at that feast he released unto them one prisoner, whomsoever they desired. And there was one named Barabbas, which lay bound with them that had made insurrection with him, who had committed murder in the insurrection. And the multitude, crying aloud, began to desire him to do as he had ever done unto them. But Pilate answered them, saying, Will ye that I release unto you the king of the Jews? For he knew that the chief priests had delivered him for envy. But the chief priests moved the people that he should rather release Barabbas unto them. And Pilate answered and said again unto them, What will ye then that I shall do unto him whom ye call the king of the Jews? And they cried out again, Crucify him. Then Pilate said unto them, Why, what evil hath he done? And they cried out the more exceedingly, Crucify him. And so Pilate, willing to content the people, released Barabbas unto them, and delivered Jesus, when he had scourged him, to be crucified. And the soldiers led him away into the hall called Praetorium, and they called together the whole band. And they clothed him with purple, and plaited a crown of thorns, and put it about his head, and began to salute him, Hail, King of the Jews! And they smote him on the head with the reed, and did spit upon him, and bowing their knees, worshipped him. And when they had mocked him, they took off the purple from him, and put his own clothes on him, and led him out to crucify him. And they compelled one Simon, a Cyrenian, who passed by, coming out of the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus, to bear his cross. And they bring him unto the place Golgotha, which is, being interpreted, the place of a skull. And they gave him to drink wine mingled with myrrh, but he received it not. And when they had crucified him, they parted his garments, casting lots upon them, what every man should take. And it was the third hour, and they crucified him. And the superscription of his accusation was written over, The King of the Jews. And with him they crucified two thieves, the one on his right hand and the other on his left. And the scripture was fulfilled which saith, and he was numbered with the transgressors. And they that passed by railed on him, wagging their heads and saying, Ah, thou that destroyest the temple and buildest it in three days, save thyself and come down from the cross. Likewise also the chief priests, mocking, said among themselves with the scribes, He saved others, himself he cannot save. Let Christ the King of Israel descend now from the cross, that we may see and believe. And they that were crucified with him reviled him. And when the sixth hour was come, there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. And at the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which is being interpreted, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And some of them that stood by when they heard it said, Behold, he calleth Elias. And one ran and filled a sponge full of vinegar and put it on a reed and gave him to drink, saying, let alone, let us see whether Elias will come to take him down. And Jesus cried with a loud voice and gave up the ghost. And the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom. And when the centurion which stood over against him saw that he so cried out and gave up the ghost, he said, Truly, this man was the Son of God. There were also women looking on afar off, among whom was Mary Magdalene, and Mary the mother of James the Less, and of Joses, and Salome, who also, when he was in Galilee, followed him and ministered unto him, and many other women which came up with him unto Jerusalem. And now, when the even was come, because it was the preparation, that is, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, an honorable counselor, which also waited for the kingdom of God, came and went in boldly unto Pilate and craved the body of Jesus. And Pilate marveled if he were already dead, and calling unto him the centurion, he asked him whether he had been any while dead. And when he knew it of the centurion, he gave the body to Joseph. And he bought fine linen and took him down and wrapped him in the linen 
and laid him in a sepulchre which was hewn out of a rock and rolled a stone unto the door of the sepulchre. And Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of Joses beheld where he was laid. Chapter 16 And when the Sabbath was past, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome had bought sweet spices that they might come and anoint him. And very early in the morning, the first day of the week, they came unto the sepulchre at the rising of the sun. And they said among themselves, Who shall roll us away the stone from the door of the sepulchre? And when they looked, they saw that the stone was rolled away, for it was very great. And entering into the sepulchre, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, clothed in a long white garment, and they were affrighted. And he saith unto them, Be not affrighted. Ye seek Jesus of Nazareth, which was crucified. He is risen, he is not here. Behold the place where they laid him. But go your way, tell his disciples and Peter that he goeth before you into Galilee. There shall ye see him, as he said unto you. And they went out quickly and fled from the sepulchre, for they trembled and were amazed. Neither said they anything to any man, for they were afraid. Now when Jesus was risen early the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had cast seven devils. And she went and told them that had been with him as they mourned and wept. And they, when they had heard that he was alive and had been seen of her, believed not. After that he appeared in another form unto two of them as they walked and went into the country. And they went and told it unto the residue. Neither believed they then. Afterward he appeared unto the eleven as they sat at meat, and upbraided them with their unbelief and hardness of heart, because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world, and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils, they shall speak with new tongues, they shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. So then, after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven, and sat on the right hand of God. And they went forth, and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them, and confirming the word with signs following. Amen. May God help us to be doers of the word. Amen. Praise the Lord. I say, church, praise the Lord. This is a very special Sunday. And I thank God I am here. Say that to yourself. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. We are thanking God because in this service, we have our overseers, all our overseers from all the continent of the world, all over the world. Amen. Amen. They've been around since Friday, and what they came to do is to plan for Deeper Life Conference Center. And the purpose of their planning is to transform DLCC. To an internationally acceptable conference center. Amen. Amen. It's a great privilege for me to introduce them to you. As I begin to mention various countries and continents they come from, please, I will request them to be coming to the altar you need to know them. They are your leaders. Amen. 
We have our overseer from the United States of America, from Canada. We have all our, some of our overseers from Europe, Russia, countries in Southern Africa, Central Africa, East Africa, North Africa, West Africa, We have our overseers. Amen. We have our overseers. You'll be surprised. We are, have our overseer from United Arab Emirates. We have our overseers from all the state of Nigeria. <laughs> Virtually from all the continent of the world. Look at, look at for me. Quarters, we want to say to you, we love you. And we also thank God that you are here to worship with us. Please, some are still coming. Please, let's both for them. You can step down so that others can, can accommodate other people. Please come in. Say, welcome, sirs. God bless you, sirs. We will rise up to pray for them. These are God representatives all over the world. They are the GS representatives in all the countries of the world. You will rise up. You will pray for them. That going back to their various country, they will go, I will say, double anointing. <laughs> the Lord, what he did for the elders in the days of Moses, he put part of his spirit, he laid it upon them. That God, there will be a transfer of power from our GS to all these men of God. They will never forget the day they came to headquarters and we pray for them. Open your mouth and pray for them. That God will help them. Anointing from the headquarters. Power, such as we have been enjoying here, will be transferred upon them and upon their ministry. They are not going to back, go back the same, the same way they came. There will be 
transfer of anointing and power over their lives. be transformed. From now we'll be hearing great things concerning them in their various places of ministry. Our great God, we thank you very much for these gifts of God to the church. You gave them to the church and spread them all over the world to do this great work of preparing people for the coming of the Lord. They are gathered at the headquarters today and we are pleading on their behalf that, oh Lord, Great anointing and power you will transfer into their life in Jesus' name. Amen. Many of them have been ministering for many years. But from today that the church is crying unto you, there will be a transformation in their ministry in Jesus' name. Amen. From today, we'll be hearing great things concerning them. As we are being with our Father and the Lord in the headquarters, you will be with them as well. I'll be now using our generous superintendent to bless us here. You will use them to bless their congregations. Great things you will do through them. You will preserve them. You will keep them you will meet all the challenges in their life. Amen. Your name will be glorified. Amen. We thank you, Father, because we have answered our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Our pastors, we love you. As they go back, please appreciate them. can have your seat.
Praise the Lord. That one is for your local church where you are coming from, headquarters. Praise the Lord. Wonderful to be here today. I rejoice with you because you are in this special service. And I pray that the Lord will open our eyes to the scriptures, to the words in Jesus' name. Amen. And the truth of his word, even though it's the common subject that we think we know, water baptism, I pray that the significance and the depth of the revelation of the word of God will come in every heart today in Jesus' name. Amen. And the effect and the blessing and the benefits of that baptism will be in your life. 
in my life in our lives together and in the church in jesus name let's pray together father we thank you this day we bless your name for your word it's ever fresh it's ever new it's ever deep it's ever ever high and we're asking oh lord your own intention in giving us this ordinance of the water baptism will be realized and fulfilled in every life today in jesus name help us to understand what you have revealed in your word coming from your spirit and you have recorded everything for us and preserved in the holy bible i will pray lord the word will work mightily in every life in jesus name we thank you because we know you have answered in jesus name we pray yeah. we're looking at matthew chapter 28 and i'm reading from verse 18 all through to verse 20 and jesus came and spake unto them saying all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth go ye therefore and teach all nations baptizing them in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy ghost teaching them to observe all things whatsoever i have commanded you and lo i am with you always even unto the end of the world and the church said you see what Jesus said in verse 19. Go ye therefore, therefore because all power belongs to me. Therefore because all authority belongs to me. Therefore because the power of heaven resides in me. And then in that power, in that authority and strength, I send you forth. And I say go ye therefore, teach all nations is telling us that no nation should miss the teaching of the fact that jesus is savior that jesus only is savior that jesus always is savior that jesus ever is savior in every tribe in every community in every nation everywhere in the world teaching them and it says when they believe that jesus is their personal savior and there is no competition no rival with jesus in their lives and they take him as the only savior without any of the traditions of their past and without any of the gods in their past in their country then you baptize them baptizo you dip them inside water you immerse them inside water it's symbolic it's practical it's purposeful that you bury them inside the water bring them back again as you bury them you do this on my authority actually the disciples knew the apostles knew from this time anything they did they were to do in the name of the lord were they eating in the name of the lord or they drinking in the name of the lord were they marrying in the name of the lord were they walking in the name of the lord whatsoever you do you do all in the name in the authority of the lord and when you baptize you go to baptize in the name of the Lord, in the authority of the Lord, because this is what he has said to you. But in the real baptism, when you dip them inside the water, inside the river, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, after you have finished that water baptism, you'll not say bye-bye, we'll meet at the gate of heaven. you bring them near and you're now teaching them all things whatsoever 
I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, always, even to the end of the world. He's telling us when he says, even to the end of the world, everything that started then, everything they began then, they'll begin, they'll continue until the end of the age. So, teaching all nations until the end of the world, preaching the gospel until the end of the world, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost until the end of the world, and then teaching them after that water baptism. You keep on teaching them all things whatsoever I have commanded you until the end of the world. Mark chapter 16. We're reading from verse 15. Mark chapter 16, verse 15. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world, and don't leave any tribe out of the world. Don't leave any community out of the world. Don't leave any person anywhere, young and old. Don't leave any person out. And he says, and preach the gospel to every creature, whatever their language, whatever their state, religion, whatever their background, and whatever they had made covenant ways or covenant in, even for the children of Israel, that's part of the world. You will teach them and preach to them the gospel, the gospel of grace, the gospel of salvation, the gospel of the kingdom, the gospel of Christ, the gospel of God, the gospel of peace, the gospel that comes to change and transform their lives. You preach that to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized. He that believeth that I, Jesus, am the Son of God. He that believeth that I, Jesus, I am the only Savior. He that believeth that I, Jesus, am the Lamb of God, made and given for the salvation of the whole world. He that believeth, not just believed, or will believe, he that believeth that this Jesus, he died, he, rose, he was buried, he rose again by the power of God and the power of the Spirit of God. When they are firm that believe, they'll be baptized, they shall be saved. He that believeth not, even if a bishop baptizes him. He that believeth not, even if the foremost apostle baptizes him. He that believeth not, even if he goes back to Jordan to be baptized. The baptism means nothing if he does not believe. He that believeth not shall be damned. And now, how significant was this baptism? To start with, all those who were baptized before Jesus died, was buried, rose again, and went to heaven. All those who were baptized on a partial understanding of a partial limited gospel. When they now heard the gospel that Jesus Christ has died, he was buried, he rose again, and he went to heaven. As they believed the gospel of the New Testament, they are now baptized, even if they were baptized before. That's how significant this baptism is. Come to Acts chapter 19. And I'm reading from verse 1. And it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus, and finding certain disciples, said unto them, Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? And they said unto him, We have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. 
Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? Holy Ghost, that name we have not heard. And then he asked them, he said unto them, Unto what then were ye baptized? And they said, Unto John's baptism. You see, John's baptism came before the death of Jesus. And when they went to John to be baptized, he said, God sent me to baptize. So he will take them and put them inside water in the name of God, God Almighty. Did he hear about the Holy Ghost in the formula of baptism in John's baptism? That's why they said, we've never heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. And there are people that say they baptize in the name of Jesus only. If a baptizing in the name of Jesus means in the name of Jesus only, how would they have heard about the Holy Ghost? But when they said, we have not heard whether there be any Holy Ghost, he said, what? Are you not baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost? If you were baptized correctly, you would have heard of the Holy Ghost. Oh, they said, it was John's baptism. Look at verse 4. Then said Paul, John very late baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him that should come. Future. Should believe on him that should come. They need to understand about the death and burial and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. He only told them he is coming. Believe on him that shall come after him that he is on Christ Jesus. And when they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. In the authority, by the authority of the Lord Jesus. And now they have the chance of hearing there is Holy Ghost. Now, not only that, if you are saved, truly saved, you're sanctified, truly sanctified, you are baptized in the Holy Ghost, you'll not say, see, I've got the Holy Ghost. I'm infilled by the Holy Ghost. I'm immersed into the Holy Ghost. And so, Water is nothing in comparison with the Holy Ghost. And so, I don't need water baptism. Yes, you do. Water baptism is so important and it's so essential that even if you, have been, if you have been saved and sanctified and filled and baptized in the Holy Ghost, if you have not been baptized in water, you still have to be baptized in water. Acts of the Apostles chapter 10. I read from verse 44. Acts chapter 10 verse 44. While Peter spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all them that had the word. And they of the circumcision which believed were astonished. As many as came with Peter, because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Then said Peter, look at this, look at this one. Can any man forbid water? Why should they be in water again? They are saved, sanctified, made holy, baptized in the Holy Ghost. And they have got something so great that came from heaven all the same. Water baptism is so important that even after they were baptized in the Holy Ghost, Peter said, can any man forbid water that these should not be baptized? which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we, and he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord because of the authority of the Lord. Then prayed they him 
to tarry certain days as we look at the word today i'm talking to you on the blessing and the benefits of the believers baptism the blessing and the benefits of the believers baptism first of all why were they to be baptized in water why were you why was i baptized in water point number one burying the dead old man at the baptism burying the dead old man at the baptism you see baptism identifies us with christ we add the old man and as christ was crucified our old man is crucified with him and as christ died after the crucifixion our old man died and as jesus was buried after his death we need to take the old man the dead old man for burial and as jesus rose from the dead the old man that was buried has to rise and become a new man and as jesus ascended to heaven and is seated on the throne of god after his resurrection we are raised up to sit together with him on his throne the significance the meaning the symbolism of that baptism is a burial with christ point number one burying the dead old man at the baptism we're looking at romans chapter 6 romans chapter 6 i read from verse 3 know ye not that so many of us as were baptized unto jesus were baptized into his death verse 4 therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death we are buried with him you cannot bury somebody if he's still alive he has to die and after that death you cannot leave him there before the people exposed to the people after that death there has to be a burial that's why it says therefore we who are baptized in water were buried with him by baptism into death that like as christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the father even so we also should walk in newness of life before that death there was a crucifixion let's come to galatians chapter 5 i'm reading from verse 19 one the crucifixion crucifixion galatians chapter 5 reading from verse 19 it's telling us now about the characteristics of the nature of the old man as the old man is still alive it's referred to as the works of the flesh galatians chapter 5 verse 19 wherefore galatians chapter 5 verse 19 in verse 19 it says now the works of the flesh are manifest which are these old man manifestation adultery fornication uncleanness lasciviousness idolatry witchcraft hatred variance emulations copycats wrath strife seditions heresies envies look at the old man the actions the activities of the old man witchcraft drunkenness rebellions 
such like and such like of the which I tell you before as I have also told you in time past that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God what do we do to the old man then? What do we do to those manifestations of the old man? Verse 24, And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh. All those works of the flesh. There's crucifixion that takes place for us. They've crucified them with their affections and the lusts. Galatians chapter 6, reading from verse 14. Galatians chapter 6 verse 14 But God forbid that I should glory save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ by whom the world is crucified unto me and I unto the world The world, what makes up the world whether it's worldliness, whether it's defilement whether it's corruption, whether it's bribes with every seed that goes to the, where the world is crucified unto me. I look at the world crucified unto me, and the one looks at me, I'm crucified unto the world. Galatians chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 20. Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. I am crucified with Christ. You cannot begin to talk about baptism without the death of the old man. The old man is crucified. And that crucified old man is put to death. And then after that, you take that dead old man for burial. That's the baptism. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I. But Christ liveth in me, and the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the face of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. One, you are crucified with Christ. Two, you are dead with Christ. To be unfortunate to find a person who oh, has not really died, is still alive, alive to fornication, alive to adultery, alive to stealing, alive to the world, alive in all the works of the flesh, and take that man that has not died and go and bury him. What a tragedy. Crucified, then dead. Come back to Romans. I'm reading from Romans chapter 6, and I read from verse 6, Romans chapter 6, verse 6, Knowing this, that an old man is crucified, was he? Our old man is crucified, was he? That the body of sin might be destroyed. The purpose, the goal, the outcome and the eventual final sin is that that old man, the body of sin, henceforth might be destroyed and henceforth we will not serve sin. You'll not be a servant of sin. Verse 7, for he that is dead is free from sin. It's not talking about Christ. He had no sin, but he talking about you, talking about me crucified and dead is freed from sin now if we be dead if we be dead with Christ we believe that we shall also live with him in verse 9 knowing that Christ being raised from the dead dies no more death has no more dominion over him. For in that he died, he died unto sin once. And in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Look at this, look at this, verse 11. Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves 
to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. We are dead with him. It's now after that death we are buried with Christ. Romans chapter 6, reading from verse 3. Romans chapter 6, verse 3. Do you not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ, were baptized into his death, therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we should live in newness of life. We are dipped into the water like burial. When somebody dies, you don't sprinkle dust on the head and say you are buried him. When somebody dies, you don't put your finger in the mud and make a sign of the cross on his forehead and say he's buried. If he's buried by baptism, you bury him and you make him lie flat inside the river. You don't make him squat in the river. When you bury somebody, you don't look at the grave and then make him in a sitting position. He lies down. You bury him and submerge him in the dust. So it says we're buried with Christ. But we don't remain there inside the water forever. We come up. Because Jesus rose from the dead. We're raised, risen with Christ. Romans chapter 7. Reading from verse 4. Romans chapter 7. Reading from verse 4. We have four. My brethren, ye also have become dead to the law by the body of Christ that she should be married to another, even to him who is raised from the dead, that we should bring forth fruit unto God. After that baptism, and you are raised and you are brought back, we need to see the evidence of a new life. In verse 6, but now we are delivered from the Lord, that being dead, wherein we were held, that we should serve in newness of spirit. After you are buried and you are raised up, you are now to demonstrate and to show that you have the newness of spirit and not in the oldness of the letter. We're looking at Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2, reading from verse 5. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 5. Even when we were dead in sins before salvation, as quickened us together with Christ. Now we've come to Christ. The old man is dead, buried. We come alive and we quickened with Christ. By grace are you saved. Look at this, look at this. And he has raised us up. He was buried. He rose up. And then he says, we too. He has raised us up together. And made us to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. In Colossians chapter 3. Verse 1, Colossians chapter 3, verse 1. If ye then be risen with Christ, crucified with Christ, dead with Christ, risen with Christ. If ye then be risen, 
was Christ seek those things which are above where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God set your affection you're baptized you're buried you're risen with Christ and you live a risen resurrected life seek those things which are above set your affections on things above not things on the earth for ye are dead and your life is seed with Christ in God when Christ who is our life shall appear then shall ye also appear with him in glory amen, amen. now verse 17 there's evidence now you've known the Lord you died with him you are raised up with him and you're now living in newness of life it's not like your past life your former life is still the life you are living cannot be now that you have been crucified with Christ you died with Christ and you are risen with Christ and you are living not in the oldness of the letter in your old life but you live in newness of life look at what follows verse 17 and whatsoever ye do in word or deed you do all now in the name of the Lord Jesus giving thanks to God and the Father by him new life what if after water baptism the person still lives in unrighteousness in the works of the flesh in the manifestation of the flesh of the old man and is just carrying the title the ticket the certificate of I'm baptized I'm baptized I'm baptized a pastor not an ordinary pastor real real pastor of deeper life baptized me I can take you to the place I can show you the place where I was baptized it was a glorious day but his life is still like it was before he said he knew the Lord what do you make of that Romans chapter 2 Romans chapter 2 verse 25 in Romans chapter 2 verse 25 for circumcision verily profiteth if thou keep the law but if thou be a breaker of the law thy circumcision is made on circumcision for the children of Israel the sin that associated them identified them with Israel as a nation is that they were circumcised the ordinance that identifies us with Christ with the body of Christ with citizenship in the kingdom is this water baptism read that verse 25 with that understanding Romans chapter 2 verse 25 for baptism prophetess verily prophetess if thou keep the law that's the law of Christ now whatsoever ye do in word or deed do all things in the name of the Lord your baptism verily prophetess if thou keep the watch of God but if you are a breaker of the law of Christ the watch of Christ your baptism is made on baptism that is it's reversed it has no value in the sight of God we must take that dead old man for burial 
is buried and the old man is forgotten and we come out now and we live in newness of life that leads me to the second point breaking of delicate new minds from old bondages breaking of delicate new minds from old bondages you see when the old man was still alive it had a lot of things it was bound to the sinner has bondages upon his life upon the spirit and when he's baptized in water that is a break from the past there is a connection with the present and the future there is a break from satan there is a connection with the savior there is a break from the world and there is a connection with the lord and let me show you an illustration in first corinthians chapter 10 first corinthians chapter 10 i read from verse 1 moreover brethren i would not that ye should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea verse 2 and were all baptized unto moses in the cloud and in the sea it says when the children of israel came out of egypt it was like baptism for them when they passed through the sea the red sea and then when they passed under the cloud it was like baptism in the cloud for them but you know what those children of israel as they were baptized unto moses in the cloud and in the sea they were supposed to be broken from the bondage of egypt exodus chapter 13 i'm reading from verse 3 exodus chapter 13 and we're reading from verse 3 breaking of the new minds these people that have just come to the lord breaking them from their old bondages exodus chapter 13 verse 3 and moses said unto the people remember this day in the in which ye came out of egypt out of the house of bondage you're broken up from your bondage remember this day that this is what it means you're saved by the application of the blood of the lamb when i see the blood i'll pass over you and now you have come out you have come out of the house of bondage for by the strength of hands the lord brought you out from this place and there shall no leavened bread be eaten look at verse 17 in verse 17 it says i came to pass when pharaoh had let the people go that god led them through the way of the land of the philistines although that was near it said he did not lead them god led them not through the way of the philistines the land of the philistines although that was near for God said, look at this, look at this, lest peradventure the people repent when the sea war and they return to Egypt. He didn't want those children of Israel that came out of the bondage to return to the bondage to return to Egypt. Would you notice numbers? chapter 11 numbers chapter 11 reading from verse 4 numbers 11 reading from verse 4 and the meek multitude 
that was among them fell and lost him. And the children of Israel also wept again and said, Who shall give us flesh to eat? We remember the fish which we did eat in Egypt freely. That's exactly what the Lord did not want them to remember. And after the baptism, now in the New Covenant, New Testament, there's something he doesn't want us to remember. The past life. The bondage we were tied to in the world before salvation. That's why the teaching now comes after the water baptism that these delicate new minds who have just come to know the Lord babes in Christ will break them off from the old bondage but there they said we remember the fish which we did eat in Egypt freely the cucumbers the melons and the leeks and the onions and the garlic but now our soul is dried away there is nothing at all beside this manna before our eyes to them the new life was dull to them the new situation was dull to them the comparison between manna Food, the food of angels that were being given to eat is uh, not uh, is not interesting to them. Still, in comparison with the onions and the garlic and the cucumbers of Egypt, that's exactly what the Lord did not want to happen after they were baptized unto Moses in the sea. The same thing uh, as we come to the New Testament. Now, we're baptized in water. And he wants us to totally break off from the old bondage. Number one, the old bondage of the world. The bondage of the world. That's why he says teaching them to observe. Now we come under teaching so that in the mind of the new believer, in the mind of the standing believer, in the mind of the long-standing believer, he is broken off from the bondage of the world. James chapter 4, I'm reading from verse 4. Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God, Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. As we have been baptized in water, we we'll make sure that the bondage of the world doesn't come back. Attraction to the world doesn't come back. Being strapped to the world does not happen again because friendship of the world is enmity with God. James chapter 1, I'm reading from verse 27. Pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and the widows in the affliction, look at this, and to keep himself unspotted from the world. We break the association. We break the interaction. We break the connection between the new believer and the world. It's bondage. Number two, from worldly powers, worldly powers will break that bondage. Worldly powers in whatever form, secret cult, evil spirit, occultism, powers, old covenant with the evil one is a bondage. And as we bring in the new believer, he needs to understand now you are connected with Christ and the bondage to worldly powers must be broken. 
Ephesians chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 2. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 2, when in, in time past, ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now walketh in the children of disobedience is bondage, is bondage. And as we're teaching the new converts and teaching the new babes, we're not just teaching them, teaching them something superficial. We break the bondage, number one, of the world. I don't want to talk about that now. You want him to remain in bondage. I cannot teach him that now. You want him to remain in the bondage of Egypt. You break him from the world. That's the teaching. And then you break him from worldly powers. In Romans, in Ephesians chapter 6, I'm reading from verse 12. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness in high places there are sinners who are being in bondage to all those powers in the sky and all those powers in the forest all those powers in the bush and when they come to christ and they bury the old man the next step is that there is a breaking there is a division there is a tearing off from the old bondage number three the bondage of religion the bondage of religion religion brings bondage you look at some various religion there is the religion on the other side of the fence and it brings bondage it's bondage to the evil one and now as they come to the Lord, there's still some things they learn in that religion. It's in their brain, it's their mind, it's in their habit, it's in their character. And what we're teaching them is to look at that old bondage and break this delicate new mind from the old bondage of religion. Galatians chapter 1. And I'm reading from verse 14. Galatians chapter 1. We're reading from verse 14. You break the old bondage of the old religion. In chapter 1 of Galatians, verse 14, and profited in the Jews' religion above many my equals in my own nation. I profited in the Jewish religion above many. There are some people, they already they get converted now, and the religion might not be the other one on, in the, on the other side of the face. The religion is uh, titled Christian. But it's a Christian that is not rooted in the Bible. And so they have a lot of uh, bondage from that religion. And some of them, either they ring the bell or they beat the drum or they burn the incense or they do whatever, they profit in that religion. But then it says, but when it pleased God who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace to reveal the son in me that I might preach him among the heathen immediately, I conferred not for flesh and blood. It wouldn't remain in the bondage of religion. That's the bondage of superstition and tradition. The bondage of superstition and tradition. And when the people come to the Lord, now they believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. The traditions are still there. It's locked up in their brain. It's locked up in their mind. I don't eat this because of that. And I don't go out on this at this time because of that. I observe this day because of that. And I'm still a Sabbatarian because of this. They have traditions. And it's a bondage. They will not enjoy the freedom of the new life. And after that water baptism, we look at them, we interview them, we understand them, and we break them away from the superstition and the tradition. I'm looking at Acts of the Apostles, chapter 17. Acts of the Apostles, 
chapter 17 and I'm reading from verse 22 Acts chapter 17 verse 22 then Paul stood in the midst of mass hill and said ye men of Athens I perceive that in all things in all things in their worship in all things in their personal lives in all things in their marriage in all things when they build a new house in all things and then when they observe a particular day in all things ye are too superstitious ye are too superstitious there are many people in our land many people in our nation many people everywhere they are too superstitious and even though they have come to Christ they repented they didn't repent of superstition they repented of I was chilling I was chill no more I was gambling I will gamble no more I was into adultery no adultery anymore I was into fornication no fornication anymore drunkenness I will not drink like that anymore but the superstition remains in touch and it is when they are born again, you see those superstitions will hinder their faith. That superstition will hinder their connection with Christ, will hinder their concept of the new life. And so we break them away from the superstition and from the tradition. I'm looking at Colossians chapter 2 verse 8. Colossians chapter 2. We're reading from verse 8. In Colossians chapter 2, verse 8, beware. Now it's talking to believers. Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men. These were believers. And Paul, the apostle, in there to tell them to break them away from traditions of men. And then it says, and not after Christ. There is a bondage of a false prophet. If you were in a for under a false prophet before you were born again, you understand that being under a false prophet is a great bondage. You could not take any decision without the affirmation and the, you know, the confirmation of the false prophet. If you are going to travel, the false prophet must tell you whether you can or you cannot. If you are going to get a new job, the false prophet will tell you whether you are going to get it or not. If you are going to get married, uh, the prophet will tell you whether that's all right or not. And if you have married already, whether that wife is a good wife or a bad wife, whether she's a witch or she's an ordinary woman, the false prophet will have to tell you. All those sinners, they were in bondage to false prophets. And whatever the false prophet said, that was it and now as they come to Christ and they're baptized in water and they're buried and they rise up again now you're teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I've commanded you and you break them from the bondage of the false prophet especially if those pro false prophets if they were not just ordinary prophets but they had some kind of power to show to the people and to capture them and to enslave them. Matthew chapter 24, I'm reading from verse 11. Matthew chapter 24, reading from verse 11. And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. Many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. And after those people who have been deceived, after they come to know the Lord as their personal savior, you must teach them to break the connection and the bondage with that false prophet. Look at verse 24, Matthew 24, 24. But there shall arise false Christs and false prophets and shall show great signs and wonders in so much that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. 
That's a very great, great bondage. You also deliver them from the bondage of fear. The bondage of fear. Hebrews. I'm reading from chapter 2. Hebrews chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 14 and verse 15. The average man on the street that eventually gives his life to the Lord. He has the bondage of fear. He fears Satan, of course. He fears evil spirits, of course. He fears old men, of course. He fears old women, of course. He fears the wind. If the wind is moving like a little whirlwind, he fears he attaches something to that. If he knocks his foot, on his stone and he misses his steps and falls there's something behind that he fears that if there is a rat or a cat that is you know in the dark and you can see the eyes of the cat but cannot see the black cat he will not sleep for the rest of the night he fears something if there's a cockroach he fears the cockroach if he's hearing sound but he cannot see the origin of that sound the person is behind the curtain or is somewhere but he's hearing the sound clearly he believes there's a mystery there he's afraid of everything he's afraid of everyone and it's a great bondage and the bondage of fear must be broken it's not just that you're baptized in water you bury that old man and then you rise again and you are taught to break the bondage of fear hebrews chapter 2 i'm reading from verse 14. hebrews chapter 2 verse 14 for as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood he also himself likewise took part of the same that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death that is the devil the devil is destroyed out of your life his power is destroyed out of your life look at verse 15 and deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage all their lifetime subject to bondage what are you doing with the new convert he has bondages the bondage of the world the bondage of world powers the bondage of religion the bondage of superstition and tradition the bondage of false prophets and the bondage of fear what do you do you teach him to break the bondage the covenant that he has with them only then with his life be free there's the bondage of worldly music the bondage of worldly music when people come to the lord there are people that are insane mad with the music of the world if they hear it anytime they'll drop everything they're doing if it's on the street they'll start dancing the, the music of the nightclub the music of the beer parlor and the music that they hear everywhere it turns them on and once that music comes to them it's like idolatry they cannot hear anything anymore and when they listen to the music that has meaning that has words that has doctrine that has the word of god to them that is not interesting it's like the manna that comes from heaven and it cannot tell the taste of that one but the onion and the garlic and the cucumber that comes from egypt that's all they recognize and you must break the bondage of worldly music we're looking at daniel chapter 3 daniel chapter 3 i'm reading here from verse 5 Daniel chapter 3 verse 5 that at that time at what time ye hear the sound of the cornage and the flute and the harp and the sample and the sanctuary and the dulcimer you understand 
organ is not only used in the church, it's used in the world. Trumpets are not only used in the church, they're used in the world. Harps are not only used in the church, they're used in the world as well. And I say, we those uh, worldly people, they have already conditioned the mind of the people. And once they hear, it, it just takes over everything. It teaches them how to live. Uh, the lyrics of the wordings of the songs in the world teaches them how to live their family teaches them the way of the world that's how they get the principles of life that worldly music and here it says at what time you hear that sound of the cornet and of the flute and of this of the harp of the sackboard and dulcimer and sultry and all kinds of music all kinds of music the people of the world they have all kinds of music there's a kind of music they play that is gentle and flows with the rhythm. There's a kind of music they play that will make you almost sedate you, almost make you hypnotize you. That if, uh, the, uh, if the dentist is operating on you, they're playing that music and the music sedates you. You will not feel the pain. And if you have sorrow, there's a kind of music they play that will take the sorrow away. You don't need Christ. You don't need a prayer you don't need any other thing just their music will do it it says all kinds of music you fall down and worship the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar king had set up and then it continues but you see there were people that have broken that bondage that that kind of music does not appeal to them and you need to take a deliberate effort and break the bondage of worldly music from the minds of the people who have just come to Christ. Make them like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Break the bondage of worldly, uh, worldly abomination. Worldly abominations. There are many abominations that go on in the world, and because uh, you know it's uh, regarded as normal, there are people that have taken that as normal, and yet it is abomination in the sight of the Lord. I'm looking at uh, Revelation chapter 17. I'm reading from verse 4. Revelation chapter 17, reading from verse 4. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. There are, you know, things like that. In Revelation chapter 21, reading from verse 8. Revelation chapter 21, verse 8, but the fearful and unbelieving and abominable, 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 and murderers and upmongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Verse 27, and there shall in no wise enter into it any sin that defileth, neither whatsoever walketh abomination, or maketh a lie, but they that are written in the Lamb's book of life. You break them off from the world's abomination. And it is a terrible abomination you need to look into. And as you're teaching these people, many people are not free from the doctrines of devils. The doctrines of devils. The doctrines of devils. They say they come to the Lord. After they've come to the Lord, all the doctrines of devils, doc devils have doctrines. And some of those doctrines will appear all right will appear acceptable like when Jesus appeared in the synagogue they said we know who thou art thou art Jesus the son of the most high and yet it was coming from the devil coming from the devil and that uh, woman that lady with spirit of divination following after these are the servants of the living God who show unto us who show unto us 
who show unto us the way of salvation uh -uh. they're not showing evil spirits they're not showing demons the way of salvation there's no salvation for them but they say these are the servants of god who are showing us evil spirits the way of salvation and you have to break them from doctrines of devils doctrines of devils i'm reading from first timothy chapter 4 and i'm reading from verse 1 for Timothy chapter 4, I'm reading from verse 1. Now, the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron that's what the lord is telling us we need to get separated from all those things and there is separation from sin partners the sin partners they're strong they're powerful in their bondage they're powerful once you know somebody has taken a decision he's going to follow the lord until the rest of his life and in the absence of the same partner, all is well. In the absence of that same partner, the decision appears firm. But the same partner calls on the phone. Where were you? I looked for you this particular time. I couldn't get you. Did you go to a religious meeting? Are you going to separate from me? She's not even seen the man. And she's already trembling. She cannot talk because there's a terrible bondage of that same partner over the lady. Or maybe it's a man who has taken the decision. What am I hearing? Are you leaving our covenant? You remember? We cut your hand. We cut my hand. We mix the blood together. We put it in water. You drank it, I drank it, and we put a curse on it that if you ever leave me, if I ever leave you, that it will go, everything is turned over at in a single moment. I pray the Lord will deliver you from that bondage in Jesus' name. Amen. A greater amen. amen. Proverbs chapter 29, I'm reading from verse 24. Proverbs 29, I'm reading from verse 24. Whoso is partner with a thief, hateth his own soul. Whosoever is a partner to a sinner, hateth his own soul. Whosoever is a partner to a backslider, Hateth a son soul. Whosoever is a partner to a compromiser, hateth a son soul. He heareth cursing and bereath it not, and the fear of man bringeth a snare. Your heart will not be calm when you are fearful. Your heart will not be steadfast when you are fearful. There's palpitation. Once you hear his voice, once you hear a voice, once you see her face to face, and you look at her eyeballs, and you look at his eyeballs, and he's not said anything yet, but because the bondage is so strong, already you're saying, I understand, I understand, don't talk, I'm sorry, I'm coming back to what we used to do, I've, I, I made a mistake, I went to that side, already you're reversing all your conviction because of the fear of man. The bondage of the fear of man will be broken away from every life here today in Jesus' name. It says, the fear of man bringeth a snare, but whoso putteth his trust in the Lord shall be saved. The Lord will keep you, keep me, keep us safe in Jesus' name. Good, good headquarters, amen. Point number three now, finally, building 
the dedicated new members with the Bible. Building the dedicated new members with the Bible. As we're building them up, as we're making them strong, there's no other book. We're using this book, the Bible. Come to Matthew chapter 28. Matthew chapter 28, I'm reading from verse 20. Teaching them, this after the water baptism, teaching them, this after taking them to the river and dipping them, immersing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. And now they have come back from that water baptism event. Now you are teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. All things whatsoever I have commanded you. Where do you find that? That's in the Bible. In the Bible, you teach them all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. And the church said, The Bible. The Bible. Somebody shout out the Bible. the Bible. Do you have your Bible there? Where's your Bible? Wonderful. Help me shout wonderful. wonderful. The Bible. What's the Bible? B I B L E. Boundless instruction, building limitless expectations boundless instruction building limitless expectations you see as that new convert baby cries as he comes he has his expectations the expectations he had as a sinner when i grow up i'll be this I'll be this, I'll be that. He comes to the kingdom of God and he begins to hear the promises of God. If these promises are true, I expect this, I hope this will happen, I hope that will happen. He looks at his life and he looks at the profession he has now and he says, can I start anything new now that I'm serious with life? Now that I've come to Christ, all my past, I never succeeded. I will start this, I will not finish. I will start this, I will not finish. I will start that, I will not finish. Now, I come to Christ. I have expectation now. Things are different. Everything I start, I will finish. You didn't hear that one? Everything you start, you will finish. Yeah. Believers have expectations. And then you're a believer, you just got into school. And then you have been thinking, you know, you know, before I came to Christ, I used to forget everything I read. Everything I take on, I used to forget. But now you're a believer and Christ lives on the inside of you. And the Holy Ghost will bring unto you the remembrance of everything he has said and everything you have learned. You have expectations beyond your expectations. There are limitless expectations. You look at the characters of the Bible. You look at the people in the Bible. Look at what Elijah did. That brings up something in your heart. And look at what um, Elisha did. That brought something in your life. You look at what Isaiah did. At what Paul the apostle did. Look at what Moses did from the age of 80 until the end of his life. And there you begin to expand your expectation. And what will bring those limited, limitless expectations to your life is the instruction 
in the Bible that is boundless, boundless, boundless. The promise is, in fact, it goes to the point of saying, with God, all things are possible, and then with you as you believe, all things are possible. You make that new convert to see the Bible in a new perspective, in a new light, and to understand this Bible I carry contains boundless instruction, building, or bringing limitless expectations. And this is what we use to build up the new members who are now dedicated unto God. Point number three, building the dedicated new members with the Bible. Look at Matthew again, chapter 28, verse 20. Matthew chapter 28, verse 20, teaching them to observe all things. How many things? Tell me out aloud. All things whatsoever I've commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Acts chapter 20, verse 32. Acts chapter 20, verse 32. And now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace. To the word of his grace to the word of his grace which is able to build you up is the word the bible that is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among them all them which are sanctified the word that builds us up second timothy Chapter 3, 2 Timothy chapter 3, I read from verse 16. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. That's the Bible, boundless instruction, building, limitless expectations is good for instruction in righteousness that the man of God may be perfect thoroughly furnished unto all good works as we build the new believer and as we build your own life what do we build number one the foundation the foundation Many of them have been here and there. There is no foundation, solid foundation to their lives. No foundation, no principles to their lives. There's no foundation, no decision in their lives. And now they come through your preaching to Christ. And now as they have been baptized in water, and you want to teach them to be firm, to be solid, to be steadfast, to be uncompromising, you start with building a foundation. Hebrews chapter 6, I read from verse 1, build the foundation. It says in chapter 6 verse 1, therefore, Leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on unto perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God. You must lay the foundation, settle the foundation before you move on. We're also building their faith, building their faith. In Romans chapter 10, and in verse 17, Romans chapter 10, verse 17, So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. They need faith. They must take the shield of faith, wherewith they'll be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. We need to build fellowship. Fellowship. 
they are not just you know isolated believers they are roaming here and there but to build fellowship how do you build the fellowship or the word or the bible in first john chapter one i'm reading from verse one first john chapter one verse one that which was from the beginning which we have heard which we have seen with our eyes and which we have looked upon and our hands have handled of the word of life that's how we build them foundation that's what the word of life faith or the word of life fellowship or the word of life for the life was manifested and we have seen it and bear witness and show unto you that eternal life which was for the father and was manifested unto us that which we have seen and heard declare we unto you that ye also may have fellowship with us and truly our fellowship is with the father and with the son we build fellowship by the word verse 6 if we say we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness we we'll lie and do not the truth but if we walk in the light as he is in the light we have fellowship one with another we need to build a fellowship so that the mindset of I'm all alone by myself. I like a solitary life. I'm going to go to heaven by myself. I believe on Jesus in isolation as an individual. No, no, not at all. Build them into the fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Build freedom. Build freedom. Build freedom. It's been so much a tie to slavery build freedom it's been so much a, a heart to a helpless life i can't help it that's what it's like the world and satan they tied ropes on his legs on his ankle and they pull him here and there it's never enjoyed freedom but now as you are building him up you build the foundation you build the faith you build the fellowship and you build the freedom in john chapter 8 i'm reading from the statue john chapter 8 i'm reading from verse 30 as he speak these words many believed on him then said jesus to those jews which believed on him if he continue in my word then are ye my disciples indeed and ye shall know the truth the scripture of truth that's the bible and the truth shall make you free in the bible that builds our freedom number five the family the family you see the family the new company doesn't know to build the family it runs to the father-in-law runs to the mother-in-law it runs to the mother runs to the father it runs to the people that are stargazers how does he build his family what's he going to do with his family he tries to recollect how daddy lived with mommy how mommy reacted to daddy that's how he's building his family and now he comes to the lord and as he comes to the lord he builds his family on the bible boundless instruction building in a limitless expectation i'm looking at matthew chapter 19 matthew chapter 19 i'm reading from verse 3 matthew chapter 19 verse 3 the pharisees also came unto him tempting him and saying unto him is it lawful for a man to put away his wife for every cause that's what they thought that's what they learned that's what their tradition told them that's what they saw in their community and he said and he answered and said unto them have you not read go back to the bible have you not read go back to the word of god have you not read that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female and said for this cause shall a man leave father and mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they twain shall be tell me out aloud one flesh wherefore 
they are no more twain but one flesh what therefore god has joined together let no man put asunder building them faith and faithfulness with fruitfulness faithfulness and fruitfulness build the consciousness that in small things they have to be faithful and you too teaching them in small things and big things you have to be faithful build that into them you are building the dedicated new members of the word of god or the bible in uh, luke chapter 16 i'm reading from verse 10 luke chapter 16 i'm reading from verse 10 he that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in much and he that is unjust in the least is unjust also in much if therefore ye have not been faithful in the righteous mammon in the spending of money who will commit to you the true riches? And if ye have not been faithful in that which is another man's, who shall give you that which is your own? And then build them for the future. Build them for the future. Build on a foundation. Build their faith. Build the fellowship, build the freedom, build the family, build faithfulness and fruitfulness, build them to always look at the future. Any action now, I look at it in view of the future. Any word I speak now, I look at those words in line with what will come in the future. Every decision I make now, every place I go now, everyone I befriend now, everything I get away from now, I do all things in line with what will be the consequence in the future. Build them and build yourself with the understanding of what happens to me as a result of this in the future in deuteronomy chapter 32 i read from verse 29 deuteronomy chapter 32 i'm reading from verse 29 oh that they were wise that they understood this that they will consider their latter end they're called to a decision. They don't just jump in decision. They look before they leave. I will consider my latter end. That decision, where will it lead me in the future? They're called to a new friendship. I won't say yes to that yet. Where will that lead me in the future? I'm called to a new kind of action. What will that result into in the future? Somebody is telling me, don't go to deeper life. The too much of the Bible. There is somebody who led deeper life. Who is who has established a church? Come over there. You'll enjoy that one. If I do that, the future. What will that mean in the future? Don't listen to them on marriage. Go and marry who you want to marry. And after all, you'll bring him, you'll bring her to that church. Think of the future. Anything you're doing, tell them. Anything they're planning, tell them. Anything they're deciding, tell them. Anything you're doing or planning or thinking of yourself, here is the bottom line. Oh, that they were wise. That they understood this. That they would consider the future their latter edge i pray that all these that were made applicable to the newcomers were made applicable to every one of our lives in jesus name you'll bury the dead old man i said you'll bury the dead old man 
any trace of the old man, any works of the flesh, if they have not been totally buried, you are buried something, we're seeing the leg outside, we're seeing the hand outside, we're seeing the head outside. Now, every scene of the old man is buried today in our lives in Jesus' name. And we break off our dedicated minds from old bondages. All those old bondages, they are broken off today. And now you are building your life and building your life. And you'll be built a strong edifice and, and, the, and sanctuary for the Lord in Jesus' name. And as you build your life and lead your life, you always think of the future of your latter end. And I pray from now until that final day, your life will be a happy life. It will be a fulfilling life. It will be a life that is built on the word of God in Jesus' name. The Bible will become a new book for you. Boundless, instruction, building, limitless expectation. A new day has started for you today. Where are you? Why don't you rise up and tell the Lord, let all this be fulfilled in your life. You are no more going to be the same again as you consider, as you bring into your life everything that we have learned today. And boundless blessings and limitless blessings will all come upon your life and you are going to be stronger greater and higher and the Lord fulfill his word in every one of your lives in Jesus name let's open our mouth and talk to the Lord now in prayer we have heard these words and now we understand it's not just baptism 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 there's something more than that open your mouth and tell the Lord Lord, I bring my life before you. Every trace of the old man, whatever remains, whatever is the association with the past, whatever it is that has not been crucified, all the manifestations of the flesh, all the marks of the old man, and all the worldly desires and worldly tastes, whatever has corrupted your spiritual taste, tell the Lord, Break Egypt from my life. Break Egypt from my heart. If you are a child of God, you have passed over to the other side. You don't belong that other side anymore. You are not on the side of Egypt. Now you are on the side of the Canaan, spiritual rest in the Lord. Look at your life now. Open your mouth and pray. This is not toilet time. We have been dealing with the symbolisms before now. But the internal thing, the spiritual thing, that is what matters. Lord, search me. Lord, search me. Is there anything of the world still alive in my heart, in my mind, in my temperament, in my desires? in my tastes, in my interests, in my ambition, in my pursuits, in my association, anything, anything. Lord, do a work in my heart today. This is why we come to church. Open your mouth and pray. We cannot go back the same. This church, we must be completely cut off, totally separated, away from the world and all the things of the world. Are you crucified with Christ? Are you dead? Dead to the world. Dead to the things of the world. Dead to the pursuits of the world. Dead to the tastes of the world. Dead to all the attractions of the world. That is the beginning. If you are not born again, call upon the Lord. The word of God has come to you today. It's not enough to be a member of Deeper Life Bible Church. It's not enough that you are coming to church. It's not enough that you are baptized. Oh, I'm baptized, I'm baptized. I belong to Deeper Life. I wear the dress. I read the Bible with them. I go to the house fellowship. Are you dead? Have you cut off all those things that bind you to the world? Do you have 
evidential Christianity. Evidence in your life is the grace of God effective and effectual in your life. That is what matters. We are told in the word of God and the man of God our Father in the Lord has read it clearly to us this morning. You ought to examine your life in the light of the word of God. Circumcision profits nothing. If you don't keep the word of God, if you don't live a victorious life, if you continue to be defeated outside church, if you are not living a life of victory over sin, over Satan, over the world, where then is your testimony? Bring your life before the word of God this morning. And we were told, it doesn't matter who you are, where you are, where you have been, and where you are coming from. That's not what matters now. It's the fruit of our union with Christ. The fact that we have been dead and we have risen to newness of life. This is what you should pray for. Lord, in private, in public, in the office, in the market, in the pulpit, in the house, in the counseling, anywhere, in the, in the place of, uh, you know, the place where I'm doing evangelism. Everything, Lord, I must live in newness of life. Desires changed. Affection changed. Your taste changed. If you are coming to church and you are still like the mixed multitude and you have no relish for the word of God, call upon the Lord. You have lost your appetite for the word of God. That is a sign that the old man is coming awake again, that you are going away from grace. Pray and come back. Pray and get back. It's when you pray the word of God gets into your heart and it takes you from where you are to where God wants you to be. And the Lord is here to do this work in our lives. His power is behind his word. If you are a sinner, you have heard. All those bondages must be broken. Come before the Lord. Jesus can break the bondage of sin. He can break the bondage of the, bondage of the world. He can set you free. He came so that we might be free from all bondage, from all bondages, from all afflictions, from all oppressions. Don't just stand there closing your mouth. Talk to God. Talk to God. Talk to God. This is a message that reaches to the foundation of our Christian life. And we have been told we are to build foundations. Build it in your own life first. Build it in your own heart first. Build it in your family. Build it in your church. We bury the dead old man. Crucified. Put to death. With all his affections and lusts. You take that dead man to bury it. If you are not born again, maybe you were baptized, but you are not born again at that time. Now come to the Lord and say, Lord, Jesus, I come to you. Save me. Wash my sins away. Make me a new man. Change my life. Forgive my sin. Come into my heart. Be alive in my heart. Let Satan and sin die out in my life. And then you go to the burial. And then you rise up in newness of life and not in the oldness of the letter. 
In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We are going to pray. All the kind of bondages that have been there. You heard what the man of God told us. All the bondage of the world. Worldly desires. Worldly friendships. Worldly tastes. All this intermingling. All those ideas coming from different sources that have come into the heart and have killed our zeal, our passion, our fire, our fellowship with the Lord. We are going to pray, oh Lord, all those things that have taken off the cutting edge from my Christian life, all those things that have deadened me in my prayer life, my spiritual life, my fellowship with God, oh God, break off all those things the bondage of the world. Break it off from my heart. Worldly lusts, all those worldly ideas, all those worldly desires, all the worldly music. Young people, call upon the name of the Lord. The hold of worldly music in your life. The hold of worldly writings in your life. The hold of worldly, all those things you watch here and there that are killing your taste, your love for God. You, you will call upon God, I cannot go on like this. I want a change. I want a change. Jesus is asking us this day, are you alive? Are you alive in Christ? The Lord is calling you and calling me. Call upon the Lord. All those bondages. If you are a sinner here, you are bound to the same partner. You have made a covenant of whatever, blood. Oh God, Jesus, I give my heart to you. All that covenant of blood, I break them before the Lord this morning. And they are broken. And they are broken. And you are free. You will not be in bondage anymore. The bondage of guilt. Backslider. Backslider, call upon the Lord. Oh God, every bondage of guilt in my heart. Blackmail. If I confess now, I don't know what this woman will say. I don't know what that man will say. If I talk now, I'm afraid. All that bondage. Break that bondage from your heart. All the bondage. They have my secret. They have something I've done. I don't know if I talk now. Break it before the Lord. The truth will set you free. Jesus will set you free. You cannot continue in backsliding. We must call upon the Lord today and begin a brand new life. Break that bondage. Worldly religions, the bondage of false prophets, the bondage of occultic books, the bondage of worldly regalia, the bondage of all those herbalists you are still going to some secret places to seek for help. The bondage of, you are still reading horoscope and all those astrologers, all those things, they are telling you the future. All that bondage. Call upon the Lord and be free. You are in witchcraft. You must be free today. Jesus is here to set you free. Jesus is here to deliver you. All the consulting with familiar spirits. Call upon the Lord. You are in bondage to false prophets. You are still writing to them. You are still watching their shows. You are still consulting them. In your difficult times, call upon the Lord. I get unto Christ today. I am free. No more bondage in my life. No more chains on me. Jesus has conquered every power of darkness. And he has delivered you. If you are a sinner, remember... You can be free from that power. You can be delivered today. Today can be the best day of your life, a new beginning. That you die to devil and sin today. You leave this auditorium. You are a new man. You are a new woman. No longer the same. Changed. Changed. Changed and totally free. You are free from worldly abomination, any kind of abomination, secret abomination, man with man, all those kinds of abomination, woman with woman, you are delivered from them. When you call upon God, Jesus will deliver you. Christ will deliver you. Are you in bondage? 
bondage to homosexuality? Are you in bondage? Bondage to all those defiling things? Bondage to alcohol? Bondage to stealing? Bondage to lying? Bonded to any secret practice, and you are thinking, hmm, this thing, I don't know how to be free. Jesus will deliver you today. We have been told, you will know the truth. The Son of God is the truth. He will set you free today. You must be delivered. And freedom in Christ will be yours. Will be yours. Will be yours. You are delivered from every doctrines of devils. Every false doctrine, every evil doctrine, whatever the superstition and the traditions of men, you are delivered from there. When you call upon the Lord, there will be freedom. There will be liberty. There will be deliverance. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Say a good day. Amen. Amen. We were told that you can be delivered from fear. And there are people that come to church, but they, are, they live all their lives in fear. Bondage. No liberty of the spirit. Liberty in the day, they don't know. Liberty in the night, they don't know. And you are coming to church. You are going to tell the Lord, every bondage of fear in my life. The fear of the past. The fear of the future. The fear of the present. The fear of man. The fear of some wicked powers in the village. The fear of some secret things in the place of work. The fear of the man in the community. Oh Lord, you have not given me the spirit of fear. But you have given me the spirit of power and of love and of a sound mind. I will not be a fearful man. Fear that will not allow you to preach the gospel in your community. If I tell them about Jesus, they will harm me. All that fear. Call upon the Lord. Deliver me from every fear today, Lord. Break the bondage of fear from my life. Before we teach others, we too must be free. A man in bondage cannot set others free. You cannot set your children free when you are in bondage. You cannot set your wife free when you are in bondage. You cannot set your husband free when you are in bondage. You cannot set your community free when you are in bondage. Every fear, fear of the unknown, Fear of the uncertainty of life. Fear of all those things that come. Lord, I reject that fear from my life. In Jesus' name we pray. And then after we are delivered, we are delivered today. I said we are delivered today. No more bondage in Jesus' name. Now we are going to go forth to go and build. We're going to build our communities. We're going to build our societies. We're going to build our nations. We're going to build our towns. We're going to build our streets. All those people whose lives Satan has broken to pieces, God is sending you forth, sending us forth to go and build them up. Open your mouth and say, Lord, I surrender myself as a builder. The word of God in my mouth, the Bible, boundless instruction, Building limitless expectations, I'm going with that Bible. I'm going with that Bible. I will build the villages. I will build the house fellowship. I will build the zone. I will build the district. I will build the city. I will build the nation. I will build the states. All the places where God is setting us as we disperse today, we build them all. We build them up, build the foundations of those converts. Workers in the kingdom, we are builders together with Christ. We're going to build them. We build their faith. We build the fellowship. We build the freedom of the sons of God, the glorious liberty of the sons of God. We build into their lives. We build the families. We build faithfulness in them, bringing fruitfulness. We build. We build them for the future. We build ourselves for the future. Every decision we take, everything we think about, in the light of the future. Brothers and sisters, the word of God is so full this morning. The word of God is so rich this morning. You must not go home. Plunge yourself into this depth. Plunge yourself into this truth, this revelation. Your life, my life, our lives together, 
will never be the same again. This is a privilege we have. We have heard the word. We have been lifted up. No more bondage anymore. No more bondage anymore. We now are fully committed to the cause of Christ. We are going to serve his purpose. We will serve him with determination. All the days of our lives, we are going to give him our all, no matter the price. The Lord has called us. We will not fail. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Boundless instruction. Bringing limitless expectations. The Bible in your hand. Where's your Bible? Raise it up. This is what has built this church. Is this Bible. This Bible built me, built you, built all of us, built this church. We will not throw down that Bible. We will not trample upon that Bible. But we hold it dear, and anywhere we go, we are Deeper Life Bible Church. And the world will know, if they never knew enough, now they are going to know now our commitment to that Bible. Keep it up, let's pray together. Father, in the name of Jesus, what can we say? This morning, you have taught us. You have made us to see that it is not just the symbolism of water baptism, the physical act but the real spiritual implication in our lives. Lord, we pray, whatever has not died in any life here, any trace of the old man that remains, anything that is still sticking out of the grave, the hand, the leg, and all those manifestations, Father, we pray by thy blood and by your spirit, cut them off from every life in Jesus' name. We we'll pray that your power, your quickening power, because you are the quickening spirit, you will quicken every dead sinner here this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. All those who are dead in their sins and they have come to church, in dead in trespasses and sins, I pray, O oh Lord, that the resurrection power of Christ will enter into every heart Amen. and bring new life in Jesus' name. Amen. And for those who have died once, for whatever reason, they died to sin, but now they are back, and now they are in bondage. Bondage to the elements of the world. Bondage to the things they have forsaken before. Lord, for every backslider, I pray this morning, restore them in Jesus' name. Amen. Every bondage of sin, break away from our lives. Amen. Every bondage of guilt, Break, break away from our lives. Every bondage to the same partner, bondage to worldly things, worldly music, worldly ideas, worldly pursuits, worldly associations. Lord, by your spirit, by your word, by the power of the Holy Ghost, break it in Jesus' name. Amen. Nobody associated with this church ought to be in bondage to anything. Bonded to any man. We have taken the yoke of Christ. We cannot take any other yoke. I pray that any other yoke that does not conform to the yoke of Christ on any life here today, break them off in Jesus' name. Amen. Whether privately or publicly, we pray, Lord, all your people will go free this morning. Amen. Free in the day and in the night. Free in the church and in the office. Free in the market and in the school. Free among our young people, our children, our old men, our married people, our fathers, our ministers, our workers, everyone free in Jesus' name. Amen. And Lord, I pray that as we go in the freedom of the Lord, we'll be setting other people free. Amen. That is the charge, the commission you have given to us. We will not fail you in Jesus' name. Amen. You have given the Bible in our hand. This boundless instruction, everything we need for life and for godliness it is in this, in this Bible. Everything we need for earth and for heaven is in this Bible. Oh Lord, we pray the devil will not take away this Bible from our hands in Jesus' name. Amen. Not only in our hands, it will be in our hearts. It will be in our thoughts. It will be in our desires. This Bible will control and rule our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. 
with this word of God, our faith, our families, our future, everything about us will be built up. This fellowship will be built up in Jesus' name. And we pray, Lord, as we go back, all of us to different parts of the world we are going back with this commission we will declare this word and lives will be transformed as we minister in jesus name and all our other workers everywhere we go anyone associated with this church the grace of god the power of god will be operating through our lives in jesus name we thank you lord for our father in the lord you have taught us again from just this water baptism thing and yet we thank you for the death of the knowledge of grace and of the goodness of God. We we'll pray Lord that that channel will never run dry. Where it's coming from anointing will keep on flowing from there in Jesus name. And together himself, ourselves, our futures are secured in the grace of God. And this heaven we will get there together. We will not be found missing in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord, because you know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.